Good day everyone. In this video, we'll discuss the definition of cost accounting, the two basic stages of cost accounting, and the various cost concepts and classifications. Cost accounting is the process of tracking, recording, and analyzing costs associated with the products or activities of an organization. Cost accounting is a staff function that performs technical roles and provides advice to those in the line position or to those who make decisions. Cost accounting serves as a foundation for both financial accounting and managerial accounting. Financial accounting is the preparation of financial statements for external users based on accounting standards. Cost accounting facilitates financial accounting by providing the information for inventory valuation. Managerial accounting, on the other hand, is the processing of information for internal needs or for the needs of managers. Cost accounting provides managers with the information needed to make decisions regarding pricing, process review, cost control, and performance evaluation, among others. Cost accounting has two basic stages. The first stage is cost accumulation. This is the stage where data on costs are collected. The second stage is the assignment of costs to a cost object. Cost assignment can mean either cost tracing or cost allocation depending on the relation of the cost to the cost object. A cost object is anything for which the management wants to know the cost. Suppose that cost item number 1, cost item number 2, and cost item number 3 are incurred solely in relation to cost object A, cost object B, and cost object C respectively. Hence, cost item number 1 is traced to cost object A. Cost item number 2 is traced to cost object B, and cost item number 3 is traced to cost object C. Suppose that cost item number 4 is incurred for all three cost objects. Hence, cost item number 4 is allocated to all three cost objects. Take note of the difference between the terms trace and allocate. Cost tracing refers to the assignment of direct costs to a particular cost object, whereas cost allocation refers to the assignment of indirect costs or common costs to several cost objects. Costs can be classified in a number of ways. Among the several classifications, the following are the most important ones. Costs can be classified as either direct or indirect. Direct costs are those that can be easily traced to a particular cost object. On the other hand, indirect costs are those costs that are difficult to trace to a particular cost object or are common to several cost objects. As we have discussed earlier, direct costs are traced to a particular cost object, whereas indirect costs are allocated to several cost objects. Direct costs can be broken down into direct materials and direct labor. Factory overhead pertains to indirect materials, indirect labor, and other manufacturing costs that are neither direct materials nor direct labor. Direct materials and direct labor are referred to as prime costs, and direct labor and factory overhead are referred to as conversion costs. Direct materials, direct labor, and factory overhead compose the manufacturing costs. As manufacturing costs, direct materials, direct labor, and factory overhead are incurred in the production of goods or performance of services. Manufacturing costs are also referred to as product costs since they are capitalized as inventory. Non-manufacturing costs, on the other hand, are those that are incurred in relation to the selling and administrative functions. Unlike manufacturing costs, non-manufacturing costs are expensed outright. Manufacturing and non-manufacturing costs can be further classified into fixed or variable costs. Fixed costs are those that remain constant regardless of changes in activity level, whereas variable costs are those that vary in total as activity level changes. Let's have an illustration. Suppose that a furniture manufacturer incurs the following costs. The company manufactures three types of furniture, a mahogany table, a bamboo chair, and a steel cabinet. Let us classify the costs as direct or indirect with a mahogany table, bamboo chair, and steel cabinet as our cost objects. You can pause the video to try answering by yourself. 
The cost of the mahogany lumber and the wage of the common carpenter are incurred specifically for the production of the mahogany table. Hence, these costs are direct costs of the mahogany table. The cost of the bamboo pieces and the wage of the bamboo craftsman are incurred specifically for the production of the bamboo chair. Hence, these costs are direct costs of the bamboo chair. The cost of the steel sheets and the wage of the welder are incurred specifically for the production of the steel cabinet. Hence, these costs are direct costs of the steel cabinet. Screws are used in all three products. However, the cost of screws are immaterial relative to the cost of the other materials. It is impractical to trace the number of screws used in each product. Hence, the cost of screws is considered indirect costs allocated to the mahogany table, bamboo chair, and steel cabinet. Paint is also used in all three products, but just like the screws, the cost of paint is immaterial and tracing the amount of paint used in each product is impractical. Hence, the cost of paint is also considered indirect costs allocated to all three products. The salary of the production supervisor is another indirect cost since it cannot be directly traced to each of the products. Hence, the salary of the production supervisor is allocated to all three products. On the same note, the wage of the factory janitor, tools depreciation, factory depreciation, factory rent, utilities, and factory insurance are allocated to all three products as indirect costs. Once again, take note that direct costs are traced and indirect costs are allocated. The classification of a cost as direct or indirect depends on its relation to the cost object. If our cost object is the entire production department instead of the mahogany table, bamboo chair, and steel cabinet, then all the costs mentioned earlier will be considered direct costs, since these costs are incurred by the production department. An indirect cost to the production department may include costs from the administrative offices, such as the cost of processing payroll and material requisitions, allocated to the production department based on the number of employees and number of material requisitions. In cost accounting though, when we say cost object, we usually mean the product or service being produced or rendered unless otherwise specified. Manufacturing or product costs are costs incurred in the production of a good or in the performance of a service. These costs are capitalized as inventory. Manufacturing costs consist of direct materials, direct labor, and factory overhead. They are further classified as prime costs and conversion costs. Prime cost refers to direct materials and direct labor. Conversion cost refers to direct labor and factory overhead. Factory overhead are those manufacturing costs that are neither classified as direct materials nor direct labor. In other words, factory overhead consists of indirect manufacturing costs. Non-manufacturing costs or period costs are those related to the company's administrative and selling functions. It is important to properly differentiate between manufacturing costs and non-manufacturing costs as they differ in accounting treatment. Manufacturing or product costs are capitalized as inventory and will only affect the income statement when the goods are sold. On the other hand, non-manufacturing or period costs are expensed outright. Hence, the wage of a production line worker, the salary of a production supervisor, and even the wages of a factory janitor and a factory security guard form part of the cost of inventory as factory overhead, whereas the salaries of an accountant, sales personnel, and CEO are expensed outright. Costs can also be classified as fixed or variable. Fixed costs are those costs that remain constant in total regardless of the activity level. Using the example earlier, the salary of the production supervisor, tools depreciation, factory depreciation, factory rent, and factory insurance are considered fixed costs. These costs remain constant regardless of how many tables, chairs, or cabinets are produced. On a per-unit basis, fixed costs vary in inverse proportion to the activity level. When more furniture are produced, the total fixed costs are allocated to more units. Hence, each unit will receive a smaller share of the fixed costs. On the other hand, when less furniture are produced, the fixed costs are allocated to less units. Hence, each unit will receive a bigger share of the fixed costs. 
Variable costs are those costs that vary in direct proportion to the activity level. Direct materials, direct labor, and some indirect costs are considered variable costs. The more units produced, the higher the total variable costs, and the fewer units produced, the lower the total variable costs. On a per-unit basis, the variable cost remains constant. Costs are usually not entirely fixed or variable. Several types of costs have fixed and variable components. The classification of costs as fixed or variable is only true within the relevant range. The relevant range is the range of activity where the assumption about cost behavior is valid. And that ends this video. In the next video, we're going to discuss the preparation of a manufacturing firm's schedule of cost of goods manufactured and schedule of cost of goods sold. See you!